was very aware that I had uh, cousins that were uh, in the Assumption Order, but they've been in South Africa for um, 50 years. I trained here. I came out here as an 18-year-old straight after school. I trained as a teacher here. Uh, I'm 71. I'm still working like, well, almost like a teenager. They were in the uh, Midwest for a conference, and they came and stayed with us. And. Uh, you know, we, I just probably hung on every word they said because I just found their work so amazing. We corresponded um, after that and the letters went into email, went into invitations. And so I did make the trip there to, um, to, do, to see them and to see what their work was all about. It was just completely a life-changing experience. I just knew that, that we back here would have to help them. Um, further their charitable work. I don't think there's a family that hasn't been either infected or affected as far as AIDS is concerned. South Africa has, of the whole of Africa, I think has been the worst hit. You know, I think we've all, we all know about AIDS and we all, we've all heard the words and we've all seen photographs and, um, but I never saw, I never saw different things that the disease would do. go to the cemetery, you just line and lines of fresh graves. Lines of graves. 30 to 40 graves being opened every weekend. It's also very sad to stand at the graveside and see your past pupils being buried. Your girls who were beautiful singers, dancers. Uh, boys who were our best cross-country runners, our best athletes, our best rugby players. And you stand there watching them being buried. The Order of the Assumption has um, different uh, locations throughout South Africa, one being in Johannesburg, which is where there are AIDS houses. It's called Sacred Heart House in Johannesburg. In many cases, when the sisters um, were able to um, you know, give them better nourishment and the antiretrovirus drugs, they become uh, well enough that they are sent home and, um, you know, they lead fairly productive lives then. After a course of ARVs, um, they're beginning to look healthy again and, and taking up jobs and wanting to work again. I don't know if there was any one distinct moment that I just, that the light bulb went off and said, we have to do something. but. Um, I will say I was there about three weeks, and um, each day was a was just another bigger experience and a realization of just how really fortunate we are here. There, there is nothing, and in many cases, if it weren't for what some of these uh, missionaries are doing, um, there would be nothing. You know, there the quality of life would be so, so much worse for some of these people. Uh, apart from the number of children who have been born infected, about a many have been affected because they have lost uh, both parents. These children then are just totally dependent on the extended family. This Zodra and her husband Milton um, have four of their own children and they're raising her nephew. Zodra's nephew because Zodra's sister dropped off this little boy who was eight or nine years old and said, I don't have much longer to live because I have, HIV has gone into full-blown AIDS and I need you to raise him for me. And so now this very small little house that is a two-room shack. One room is the kitchen, the other is the parents' bedroom and just like a cloth that divides these two rooms. And um, at night, these poor, these five children 
go to sleep under the kitchen table because there is no bedroom. There is no bedroom. And they sleep on this hard dirt floor. That is totally inadequate for a family, especially if you want your children to study and get on in life. And what sister hopes and why she hopes that we can help them in particular. If we provide a place for them to study and a place for them to have their own space, hopefully then these five boys will then be able to parlay what they've learned. They will then take that and then they will play it forward. And then those people that they help will then play that forward. So it, it's not just helping one family by any means. It is with the hope that those boys will go out and do wonderful things with their life. Once people get a little bit of money, they start enlarging their house. And this is what we, one of the things that we would hope to do would be to improve. You know, they help child families with um, education for their children, um, tuition, books, um, could even be almost getting them to school. And certainly to help with medicine and, and uh, medical for people who are sick and in need in that way. They also run this incredible nutrition center for children and they give them a breakfast of oatmeal in the morning and bread and jam and a, a light lunch before they leave school in the afternoon. Any money sent to us will be used for the alleviation of poverty. They are taking care of, in some cases, the basic necessities of life. And that's, I think, what I was so taken with. But our problems aren't all solved, believe me. There's still a tremendous amount to be done. So what, we, what our goals are, are to bring in as much money as we can to help champion their charitable work. The results we won't even know for years probably, but wouldn't that be a wonderful thing if 20 years from now, you know, those children, you know, who then would be, you know, late 20s, early 30s, were all doing wonderful things with what they had learned. We are deeply, deeply impressed and deeply grateful for all that has been done not just by Maureen and Fran and her immediate family circle, but all the people that she has reached out to and who have responded so magnanimously to her appeal. We are just words fail me when I come to think of it. By nature, none of us like asking, you know, but the end result is that we know, no matter what we raise, will better someone's life. You can find us at www.raceforrelief.org. Well, you can buy your entrance tickets uh, right there. If you can't attend the event uh, and still would like to contribute, there are ways to do that. You can purchase raffle tickets. You can still become a t-shirt sponsor if you care to do that. And I just want to invite every one of you to come out and have a great day at Hawthorne. Um, we will have wonderful entertainment lined up, a fabulous buffet. I would love to be there that it is just one of these things that would be totally impossible. Thank you immensely. God bless you all. And know that it will be rewarded. So come on out and have a great day.